Hi, everybody. It's meteorologist Joe Chaffee. <clears throat> I'm going to spend my time tonight, mo mo most of the time, talking about this brutally cold air mass and the polar vortex and, and what's happening over the next three or four days. First off, I just want to show you the NAM here as uh, we have the non-event for to overnight is moved out. and looks like it brings in some snow showers through here tomorrow night into Thursday morning as that upper air disturbance finally pulls away and actually produces some on and off snow showers through Thursday. Now, before that Arctic air comes in, and here's the Arctic front, we have a low that is going to form in the Carolinas and move out to the northeast. And I should point out that uh, this precip that you see here on the northern fringe might be precip that's being enhanced by the Arctic front and not necessarily from the low, but um, it does want to bring it close. And then as we go uh, into Saturday, of course, the low is out, and this is going to intensify into a big storm out in the ocean, and it sets up the arrival of cold air. Now, <clears throat> what is happening, we'll go to the upper air, and I'm going to show you the, I have to switch models here, so just give me one second. There we go. No, it doesn't want to switch models on me. Boy, tonight... First time I did this video tonight, the internet crashed. Oh, okay. I know what I have to do. First, the internet crashed, and it wouldn't let me switch models. But now let's switch. Mo let's um, let's pick the region I want, which is the big region here, and just go backwards a little bit. And here's that trough that's lifting out now for the next day or two. And right here, right back through here, you can see this is the beginnings of an intensifying polar vortex over Hudson's Bay, and that vortex drops, strengthens, and drops south-southeastward right overhead. So we're getting right into the core of this brutal Arctic air that's coming down. That vortex drops into upstate New York and then passes over Vermont and New Hampshire and moves off the New England coast. And this is how we get shots of very bitter cold and that's coming in. And then as we move into the rest of the weekend and early next week, that vortex then pulls out. Now, what does that mean? in terms of the temperatures. Well, let's switch over and I'll get a little tighter. You know what, I'll get even tighter. Okay. This is, these are the temperatures over the next few days, okay? And we'll take a look at them and you'll, you'll see, well, this is what, well, the GFS now. Um, <clears throat> we are in the 30s tomorrow and then uh, into the low, t into the teens, uh, for Thursday morning, probably not much out of the 20s for Thursday, low teens for Friday morning, and then we go into Friday back into the 20s. We drop into the teens Saturday morning, and then during the day Saturday, the temperatures just keep on falling because that vortex is just coming down, and you can see the advance of the bitter air as we go into Saturday night. And here we are at the bottom, it's Sunday morning, and we're pr it has printouts of minus 4, in, nor in northeastern New Jersey, here's a minus 8. I'm guessing that's probably Allentown. Minus 1 at Philadelphia. Minus 14 in northwest Connecticut. Minus 9 in northeast Connecticut. And I want to point out that the <clears throat> European, for days, has been showing the minus 10 line coming all the way down to the Connecticut coast. So I think this, we stand a good chance to see temperatures go below zero in New York City. Now, what will be key to this, and this is the more important thing, is the, um, the wind. That is going to really dictate what um, uh, whether we go below zero or not. Um, the wind is key as it needs to go westerly. And there we go. Lost the internet there for just a second. Second time tonight. Oh, boy. Okay, so let's see. Here we go. So the key to all this is the wind, as we said, the wind direction. Now there's um, the setup with the low that comes off the Carolinas, intensifies out in the ocean, the vortex drops down, but look where the high is. You, you know, a lot of times we get these cold air masses, the highs go way south. This one has one center probably up near uh, Lake Superior, this other center that shows up in Ohio, but you have this, these isobars are coming straight from the north. Now, if our winds are north, northwest, or north, right into Sunday morning, we're going to go below zero. If for some reason the winds were to turn more westerly, then that would probably stop the temperatures from falling. So 
well, I mean, they'll still get down to near zero, but they may not get below it. But with that north-northwest wind, if that north-northwest wind holds into Sunday morning with the core of the bitter cold air just about overhead, we will see temperatures go below zero for the first time in New York City since uh, 1994. And although areas just near New York City have been below zero before, but uh, New York City's kind of avoided it for the last 22 years. Now, we'll go out just to give you a flavor of what's going to happen a little bit in the longer range, because that cold air mass does pull out, and the high goes out to the east of us. Now, the European model wanted to pull the high out more over toward Nova Scotia. We'll have to see what that model does. And then we get into some precipitation on Tuesday with a weather front that stalls, and then the GFS wants to bring another wave uh, close to the coast, and then it moves out. So uh, it looks like we'll probably have some kind of a precipitation event here along about uh, Monday night or Tuesday, but we'll have to see how it all evolves. But um, this is truly, you know, to me, this has been really a very remarkable and very interesting winter in terms of all the things that have happened. Now, just um, one other view here, and we'll go back to here just to show you what happens in the long range. And you do have a trough that uh, develops to our west. So, you know, there'll be something happening, but the pattern looks like it's going to probably change to some degree after that goes by. It looks like it's realigning again into something else. But what's interesting is that as we go beyond um, February 21st, you see how that big ridge pops back up in the west. So that's telling us that um, whatever happens, whatever change we're having is going to happen is going to be temporary because we set up another deep trough. Uh, here in the eastern states. So I don't think winter's over by a long shot, even if we wind up with a pattern realignment that causes us to warm up for a few days um, later next week. So it looks like uh, we have some more interesting adventures to go through in this uh, wonderful uh, world that we live in. Um, I will uh, hope to carry you along with, with me in these adventures over the next few weeks. In the meantime, you have a nice day and prepare yourself for a bitter cold blast and some below zero temperatures that are coming this weekend.